Hi there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com. I'm the mom of 15 children. I've been homeschooling for over 32 years. And today I'd like to share with you some tips and tricks to save money on groceries. So stay tuned. Now over the years I've had a lot of people, I had to keep their tummies full and I had to make sure they had to have the best nutrition that I could afford to build their bodies and their minds and all of that. And so, you know, um, I think I've learned a little bit over the years. I'm always learning new things. And uh, I'd just like to share with you first a foundation, a setting, a foundation to build this frugal grocery shopping, everything on. And first of all, I want to read to you two scriptures, okay? Two passages of scripture, I'll say. Because I don't, I don't get along well without God and His Word. I just don't, I, I don't do well. I'm kind of scatterbrained. I can get uh, negative and morose. Um, I, I have trouble believing. I kind of tend to the darker side. But with Jesus, he has filled me with joy and with hope. And so I want to read to you some scriptures, some things that he said directly, okay? First off, I, I'm going to read to you... Um, so I'm going to read to you actually one passage of scripture that I think will be illustrative. And there's, there's two places you can find this. There's Matthew chapter 6, verse starting with verse 25, will you know, address this. But I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 12, starting with verse 22, okay? Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. <laughs> life is more than food. It's true. And the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, yet which have, which have, okay. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow, sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? A cubit, I'm pretty sure is from here to here, right? Okay, anyway of a male's arm. So, um, If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, into the oven, how, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? <laughs> and do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, <clears throat> but seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. And here's a really cool part, it says. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Isn't that cool? Okay, so um, I thought that was really neat, and that, that ended with verse 32. So I wanted to share with you something about my journey feeding so many people, and that is this, is that God has shown me, I mean, I have, I have, there have been times when I was really fretful, and I was like a bean counter, and I was like, you know, every little ounce, every little grain was accounted for, and um you know, I, that was a, a great area of fear. And if that was touched, that would cause an emotional response in me. And it was not positive and it was not good. Well, God started revealing that to me. And he started showing me that he wanted to be my supply. And he wanted me to rest so securely in that supply that I would have no fear. I've got to tell you, when Jesus spoke these words, he was telling people who lived under the iron fist of Roman rule, 
that they were to trust God for their clothing and their food. And I don't know if you've read about Roman rule, but they excised taxes that were draconian, taxes that made it so where people didn't hardly have anything left after they paid taxes to, you know, the government. You know, and Herod was in charge, and he lived really uh, scrumptiously. So he was taking a lot of money from people in order to uh, bolster his, um, you know, lifestyle, right? So <clears throat> Jesus was speaking to people who lived in an age that probably was worse than what we're living through now. I know we're living in a time where our grocery prices are rising steadily. And I know we're also living in a time where even if we had the money, there's lots of things that we just can't find, okay? But Jesus' promises are still true. And I know they're going to be true for the average family because they were true for us when we were living in, uh, you know, in, in a situation where we needed a lot more groceries on the same income everybody else had. <laughs> and so when we look at this, we see that Jesus is asking us, to really, really trust him to be the God who provides, you know? Like, um, I just think of so many situations that God has provided for me miraculously, and I will share one with you that is really close to this time. Um, yesterday was Mother's Day where I am, and so I was um, not feeling well that day, not feeling well at all, and um, my children did so many wonderful things for me, but I was sitting there in my office and doing some work. And I said, Lord, I just don't feel like eating. It would be rude. <laughs> Lord, I just don't feel like cooking. It would be really wonderful if one of my kids would buy me dinner. <laughs> and then my daughter calls up. She goes, hey, mom, I'm at the grocery store. Is there anything I can get? And I said, yeah, just a gallon or two of milk is fine. She goes, oh, rotisserie chicken. I could get that. Oh, and I'll get some salad and I'll, you know what, I'll get a dessert, okay, and I'll bring it over. And it was like, yes! <laughs> I was like, God was meeting my need immediately for food. <laughs> and he does that to me all the time. He did that to me, he does that to me all the time. I'll have like X amount of money to spend on groceries, and I'll go to the store, and lo and behold, the very thing that I needed to purchase will be half off. Or they'll be like, they're trying to get rid of a whole bunch of it or something like that. Or someone will say, you know, I have this extra and I'll just give it to you. And it's just, we need it. And this happens to me all the time. And I just see that God's been trying over the years. He's been getting me closer and closer to just completely just throwing out my own anxious thoughts about this part of my life and really, really trusting that he's going to take care of me. Now, when we talk about that, and we're talking about our situation, a lot of us have been used to an abundance of uh, our, our money stretching farther, so we had a little more abundance of money to use to purchase food. And there are situations where there's really nothing to buy, or it's just so expensive, and you have, you know, everything's, your, your income's being reduced, or your, the buying power of the do dollar is so reduced that you just don't even see how you're going to do it. Um, and it's easy to become, in that situation, you feel deprived. You feel low. You feel like, um, where's God? What am I going to do? Um, you know, it's boring. The food we have is just really boring and awful. And, you know, how are we going to buy anything that we even like to eat? You know, we have got special needs, or my family's really picky, or my, my little kids, I mean, they're so skinny and they don't eat what I give them anyway. How am I going to afford the things I need now? And so it's easy just to kind of become kind of depressed. So what I want to share with you is um, this is not, you don't have to look at it like that. You can look at having less money or it, you know, whatever. My, my income over the years has always fluctuated up and down. And what you do is you just look at it. Here's a challenge. This is a challenge. It's like playing a wonderful game. And you think it's not really about us being reduced. It's about us having wonderful food with a reduced income or reduced buying power. But we can still trust God. You know, if you think about Solomon being arrayed, you know, the Bible says that Solomon was not arrayed as one of these. And he's talking about the flowers. Well, don't you think God, in wanting to bless us with food, would bless us with food that, 
not only feeds our bodies, but our souls as well. Because I serve a God. I have this friend, her name is Capri. And she told me that a lot of people only believe God for dinner, but she believes him for dessert. <laughs> and so we can believe God for dessert, even in hard circumstances. I just think here about how Jesus took the loaves and fishes and he took this little bit and as he blessed it and broke it, it hadn't divided, it hadn't increased, but as his disciples gave it out, it just kept going and going and going. And you know, in these times that we're living in, God is wanting to show up and do amazing miracles in our lives. He's wanting to show up and show each of us how much he wants to provide. He wants to take that pot of spaghetti that didn't look like it was enough to feed and just keep pulling noodles out and noodles out and noodles out. That actually happened to a friend of mine whose family, um, they homeschooled and I think she had like seven or eight siblings and they went to live, you know, they were the authorities. I, I know her dad quit a really high paying job because he wanted to be with his kids and he wanted to go like to a homesteading kind of a thing. And so they moved to uh, one of the um, Great Lakes states and uh, they went to the, they bought some land in the forest and they were going to build their house. But at the time they were kind of living in tents and everybody had to have odd jobs and everything. And um, they were reduced to like this little handful, just like a handful of spaghetti noodles. And um, they weren't, it wasn't enough to feed a family of eight or nine, right? And um, so they just prayed over it and they boiled the noodles and they just, they filled everyone's plates to overflowing. <laughs> well, this is this handful of spaghetti noodles. And there are miracles. God does that stuff all the time. So it's going to be a really cool, think of it like a game, like an opportunity to, I love times like these now, you know, because I'm going, okay, so recently we not only had our, um, the buying power reduced, but we had our budget reduced pretty, pretty severely by a number of things. And you know what? I'm going like, you know, Lord, I can't wait to see how you're going to meet the needs. It's going to be so much fun, and it has been. God's just been doing amazing things. So um, don't think of it as a depressing thing. Think of it that God wants to give you an upgrade in your faith. God wants to not only just have you like spend money to be provided for, but he wants you to see his fingerprint. He wants you to see his care and his personality and his person giving you the things that you need and it's going to be glorious and it's going to be funner it's going to be so much fun that you're not going to want to have money that does everything you because you know that's mammon right that's money but when you see god doing it <laughs> it's so much fun so anyway having said all of this i'm going to put another chink in this chain and i'm going to talk about government and outside assistance for food and I know this is a hot spot. I, for one thing, I am not for socialism. I think getting people dependent on government help actually allows the government to be bossy in our lives and tell us what to do. And you know, if we don't do what they say, they can jerk out the food and then we're all in a bad place, okay? So I am not for socialism. And, but at the same time, if there is a person that I know that has been reduced to a place to where they just can't, I mean, their kids are gonna go hungry if they don't do something. Well, guess what? Then they have an obligation to do that as long as it, they don't have to compromise um, their belief in God or their moral decisions or their family life to do it, okay? But I am not gonna judge people that have had to do that. And I hope no one listening to me does that either. Now, the best way we could do this is to just help each other, but I've gotta tell you that if you've ever been in a situation where you absolutely had nothing left to eat and you had to find a way to feed your family, um, if you go to, a, a lot of churches are very generous, but there's a point at which they say to you, have you gone to the government? Because our churches have become dependent on the government meeting needs as well. So it's an unfortunate reality, but churches really, um, I mean, I know there are food banks and stuff, but even sometimes food banks will require things. And so you just have to be, you have to be open to God providing. But if someone has been reduced to that, or I said reduced, didn't I? If someone has found themselves in that kind of a situation, I hope we're not judging them. And, and don't hang your head in shame, you know? And, you know, we're all in different places in faith, right? And so it's not a judgment on you. If you had to go and do that, then just be thankful for what you got. Just be, and just say, this God, this is how you're providing. With the amount of faith I have and the situation, 
I'm thanking you for this help and for this food and consider it a blessing for him just like everything else and don't feel bad. Of course you want to be able to do it yourself. Of course you don't want to take handouts. Who likes that? I don't know. But if you have no other way to work, let's say that that um, you have disabilities and you can't work. Well, that's a whole different situation. No one should judge you for that. Or let's say that, uh, you know, different situations in your life to where there's just no way where you could work and do that. Guess what? That's what it's supposed to be there for, right? So there's no shame in that. Um, so I'm hoping I've addressed that. I think I have. Right? We're not going to judge people. And if, if, if I'm going to you know, contribute to a food bank or something and you're there and you need that food, I am happy for you. But here's the better way. If I know of someone who's struggling, if God puts it on my heart, then I should respond by the Holy Spirit and give to others instead of them having to go to the government or to a place where they have to feel like they're begging, right? Okay, so we've covered that. Okay, let's go on. Okay. So I also wanted to share this. There have been many times in my life that I thought, oh my goodness sakes, we are at the end of everything. So what am I going to do? And I scramble and I do something kind of like Sarah did with uh, Hagar and gave Hagar to her husband because she was pretty sure God wanted them to have a child, but he was expecting them to do something about it. And so I'll know it's not the Lord, but I do it out of fear. And I'll do something crazy like, uh, um... I'll sell something or do something and so then I can go to the grocery store and buy something and then boom like a day or two later God just blesses me pours out from heaven blessings on me and I look at what my little piddly effort and realize it wasn't God and it was kind of silly <laughs> because I did it out of fear so sometimes we go out and we do things because we are not really listening to the Lord other times we do things because this is God leading us how he's going to provide so you got to be sensitive to the spirit. So now that we've laid that foundation, I think that maybe it'd be a good idea to stop here this time. So we've got this foundation laid and the next time I'll come back and I'll teach you these really practical steps. Now remember that when God gave wisdom to King Solomon, it wasn't just about spiritual stuff. It was practical earth stuff like about animals and times and planting and all kinds of stuff. Everybody came to him about practical everyday things. See, God's not separate and like, he only wants you to know about spiritual things and then everything else practical, you gotta go to the world. You gotta go to secular ideas because you know, God, God's in the whole thing. Now God will use secular ideas to bless you in a spiritual way. Um, but you don't have to think of God as only being like spirit, like here's here's your spiritual life, here's church, and here's your practical life, and your everyday work. No, no, no. It's all together. God wants to be enmeshed in everything you do. So he's going to give us, and he's going to expect us, and he's going to bless us with practical ideas. So if you stay tuned, next time I come back, we will talk about the this practical list here that I have all set up. <laughs> So you have a beautiful day. I hope this blesses you as we're going into this season coming up. And, you know, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye-bye.